Hey guys, Martin here again, and today we're gonna to be speaking about cardio for fat loss. So many people use cardio to promote fat loss, and there's nothing really wrong with that, okay? We know that there are two sides of this calorie balance equation that we can influence, you know, we can change and manipulate calorie intake, and we can also manipulate calorie output, and cardio is one of the main ways that we can manipulate the calorie output side. Now, some people even think that cardio is a direct pathway to fat loss. Okay, we've all heard of people saying that, you know, when they're sweating, they feel like they're burning fat. Um, you know, every time they take a step on the treadmill, they're burning fat. And again, this seems to be faulty thinking, which can lead to suboptimal uh, cardio choices. And this can compromise the sustainability and the outcomes of the fat loss phase. So there are many different cardio modalities out there and there seems to be two main battles. So we see this battle, this one battle between high intensity interval training and more you know, aerobic steady state training like walking. Um, and then we also see a battle between fasted cardio versus fed state cardio. Okay, so we've all heard of the people who believe that you must get up and go for a walk or do some sort of cardio straight away in a fasted state and you know they live by that but then other people say that you know what it doesn't really matter when you do your cardio as long as you do it and as long as the energy balance at the end of the day leads to negative you are going to be losing some body fat so we're going to explore all these cardio modalities today now what we need to understand initially is that cardio itself isn't as fat burning as many people think. So remember, fat loss is predicated on fat balance, which can be influenced by calorie balance, right? So cardio itself, just because you do half an hour of cardio doesn't mean you're going to be losing fat, okay, if you're not in a deficit. So I hope most of you guys understand that, okay? And we have to remember that most of the, the fat loss that we experience that anyone experiences is actually going to happen at night when you are sleeping. Okay? This is when your body is in a fasted state for a prolonged period of time and is utilizing a lot of uh, fat for energy. Okay, and Thus, we get a lot of fat loss at night when we're sleeping. So not much of that actually happens you know, when we're doing cardio. Okay, and I'm gonna get to this in a second. So really, what cardio is allowing us to do is just manipulate that calorie output side okay, of the equation, which I mentioned earlier. It's allowing us to expend more calories and expand the deficit size, right? In hope of promoting the use of fat for energy and, and thus fat loss. Now, the one thing I do want to note here is that whenever we change one side of this equation, there is an automatic influence on the other. Okay, so our brain is uh, great at trying its best to maintain energy equilibrium. And what I mean by this is whenever you increase energy output drastically, we see this response that can impact energy input. For example, we may get hungrier. Okay, so our brain may be prompting us to eat more food so that we can restore that energy gap which we are creating with the increased cardio. Okay, another response to doing a lot of cardio is that we may actually compensate for that increased energy expenditure later on in the day by not moving as much. Okay, and thus our total daily energy expenditure decreases or stays the same. So although acutely we're burning a lot of calories with the cardio later on in the day, if we, if we spend the rest of the day sitting on the couch, then maybe our total daily calorie expenditure may not actually change that much. And then on the other hand, we all know that when you decrease calories and you're in an energy deficit, we also get an increased hunger response. We get, uh, you know, uh, we become lethargic, we become tired, and that is a response that aims to decrease our energy output to maintain equilibrium, right? So I just wanted to ensure that you guys understand there is an intricate balance between energy input and energy output, and they both can influence each other. 
Now, with all that said, let's explore the different cardio modalities. So, we have high intensity interval training. Now, most of you guys should know what that is. If not, do a quick Google search. What are some of the pros and cons? Well, first of all, it's a very low time commitment. Okay, you don't have to spend too much time doing high intensity interval training. Okay, and it comes with a high acute calorie burn. You can burn a lot of calories in a shorter period of time. Now, there is also a potential afterburn effect where throughout the rest of the day, or at least the hours following that cardio session, you get an increased calorie expenditure. Okay, that may be the case. And also, high intensity interval training comes with some fitness adaptations, it comes with anaerobic adaptations and what a lot of people don't know is that it also comes with aerobic adaptations okay and the more intervals you do usually the more aerobic the uh, hit training becomes okay and it's aerobic in the rest periods when you're recovering from the anaerobic uh, bouts of activity so something to keep in mind there now the cons of this sort of uh cardio is that it, it's kind of hard to overload it's hard to progress because remember it, it also is quite fatiguing hit training is hard undoubtedly and you know you can't just keep adding minutes and minutes and minutes of hit training because you're going to get to the point where it just gets way too tough and changing the interval lengths and the rest periods can have you know some impact on total energy expenditure but really it's not going to change any energy expenditure to a great degree now what we also need to know here is that um, this increased fatigue cost of hit training can delay recovery okay it comes with a greater demand on the system and this may impact your performance in the gym right so we need to understand this because i've spoken about this in other videos Muscle retention is important when you're trying to lose fat, and that means we need to be training you know, to the best degree possible to maintain muscle, and we can't let cardio interfere with that. Now, if we move on to just your general aerobic uh, training, you know, steady state, continuous, low intensity training, think about walking. Well, it comes with a moderate calorie burn, okay? It's very easy to track. You can even incorporate it into your step count for the day. It's easy to overload. You can always kind of add, you know, minutes upon minutes, and really that there's no additional fatigue cost to that, okay? And it doesn't impact recovery or performance anywhere as near as much as HIIT training might, okay? The only issue with this sort of training is it comes with a great time commitment, okay? And yet there isn't any real robust aerobic adaptations to just walking. So something to consider there. Now, if we take a step further and quickly discuss fasted cardio, I will then uh, be able to move on and provide you guys with some tips. Now, fasted cardio actually has some benefits, okay? And recently, a lot of people have seen, uh, seemed to just ignore it and say that it's, you know, it really doesn't matter at all when you do your cardio. And really, we probably need a little more research before we can come to a conclusion that is that clear, okay? Fasted cardio does come with an increased rate of acute fat oxidation and there are changes to the body's physiology that occur when you're doing fasted cardio which may have benefits to overall fat loss okay we may we get this increase in um, processes that may lead to greater fat mobilization and, and, and thus um, fat loss and we also get other changes to uh, physiology which may be beneficial like i said but with this sort of faster training, right, with faster training in, in general, there is an increased chance of protein oxidation. And what I mean by this is there's an increased chance that your body will start using protein for energy, specifically protein from muscle. And you know we definitely don't want that. And the chances of this uh, happening go up when you surpass about 60 minutes of fasted state cardio. Now, if we look at the research between fasted state cardio and, and fed state cardio and their effect on you know long-term uh, body composition and fat loss the current consensus is that there really may be no you know significant difference between the two but there are limitations to this sort of research and we probably need more research uh, for further clarity so something to keep in mind there now with all that said okay hopefully you guys now understand the pros and cons of each approach i do want to provide you guys with four tips um, and four considerations to make when uh, utilizing cardio for fat loss. Now the first one is 
just simply ensuring that you enjoy the modality of cardio. Okay, that is super important. You don't want to be doing cardio that you just don't enjoy doing. Okay, you don't want it to be hard. You know, you want to you want to be able to just get up, do your cardio, enjoy it, even if it's a little hard. Okay, but you just don't want to be really having to push yourself to get up and do that cardio. It needs to be enjoyable. Okay, some people love walking and they love doing steps. So these people might benefit from having a really high step count. There's nothing wrong with prescribing a really high step count if the individual, the client, loves walking. Okay, there are many benefits you know, to walking that go beyond just the fat loss that we may get from it. Okay. Some people, on the other hand, though, won't enjoy walking for continuous, you know, prolonged periods of time. So you do need to have other tools in the toolbox um, and utilize different modalities of cardio. In that case, maybe HIIT training is more suitable. Now, the second thing we need to understand here is that the cardio modality should not interfere with our resistance training. And I did outline this earlier. We can't let it interfere with the adaptations that we are trying to obtain from our resistance training sessions. So whether it's due to compromised recovery or impacted performance, we do need to choose cardio wisely and prescribe it wisely so we don't experience any of the ramifications. So remember, resistance training is the most potent stimulus for muscle mass retention, which means we need to uphold it and that's super important during uh, fat loss periods. The third uh, tip here is to ensure that you have an ob objective way to overload your cardio. So just like anything, your body adapts to the stimulus of cardio, and over time, you may actually start burning less calories per unit of time doing a specific cardio modality. So in, the, in that case, you know, there needs to be some form of overload, or else your energy deficit will stay stagnant unless you change the calorie input uh, side of the equation. Furthermore, once calories can't be lowered any further, remember if you're getting quite lean, if you wanna get quite lean, it's gonna be a point where you can't just keep dropping calories, okay, for you know feasibility, right? And cardio may be the only option at this point to increase the calorie deficit, okay? So we need to choose cardio modalities that we can actually overload and increase over time and we need to be able to track that, okay? And, or a better way to do all this is to incorporate your cardio into your step count, okay? That's such a neat way of a tracking cardio, tracking NEAT especially, because cardio is a component of NEAT and it's so easy to overload. And the last thing I will say here is we need to ensure that the individual, okay, you, whoever it is, your client, doesn't compensate for the cardio they are doing, okay? High intensity cardio generally comes with a greater chance of the person compensating later on in the day with reduced energy expenditure, reduced NEAT. And I spoke about this earlier. Okay, we need to take that into consideration because sometimes the cardio may actually have uh, no net positive effect if the compensation is quite significant. The last thing I want to speak about here is that if possible, you know, try to reap the potential benefits of fasted cardio. Okay, if you have time, you know, to get some fasted cardio in. This is a great way to get on top of your step count, you know, really early, get some cardio uh, done really early throughout the day. And it's also a great way of building a routine. And I think this is so important because over time, routines can mold into your behavior. And this is of increasing importance if your goal is to maintain fat loss. We know that one of the reasons people can't maintain fat loss is because they don't ingrain any habits that eventually become part of their behavior. And getting up in the morning, you know, specific days throughout the week to do your fasted cardio is a great routine to uh, incorporate, if you can, obviously. Some people may not be able to do that. Now, if you do do ca fasted cardio, I don't recommend doing more than 60 minutes, okay, at one go, because like I said, there may be an increased chance of your body using protein for energy at that point. And if you are some sort of physique competitor or an individual who wants to get really, really lean, a protein shake before your fasted cardio may be a good option. Now, technically, this would not be fasted cardio anymore, but having a protein shake may reduce your body's chances of 
uh, pulling um, protein and using it for energy and doesn't actually interfere with any of the benefits that you may actually get from fasted cardio, okay? It seems that these benefits will only be, I guess, mitigated if you eat carbohydrates or fats before the session. And if anything, there may actually be some positives to having protein before a fasted cardio session, but we do need some more research on that. So guys, I hope that all made sense. I hope that you find those tips helpful and you can incorporate them into your own fat loss journey. If you have any questions about today's video, be sure to leave them below and I'll see you soon.